Howdy and welcome back. My name is Oliver, the shoe man, and today we have a pretty cool pair of boots to be working on. Um, they are a pair of Fry boots. Um, God knows how old these are. They belonged to the customer's father, um, and they happen to be the same size, and he wants to be able to wear them. So we're going to do a complete rebuild new soles, new heels, new leather stacked heel bases. We're going to be redoing new welts, footbeds on the inside that were formed to his father's sh foot, feet, the footprints on the inside where the where he walk on. I'm gonna replace those so that the customer can start to form his foot in it. And we're gonna be doing new heel counters as well because here in the back, it's, I don't know, it's kind of hard, that's already, crunched up and there's no shape whatsoever. We're gonna be taking care of the toes, seeing if you get a little more shape. And then we're going to be widening these just a tad bit. So it'll fit his foot a little bit better. So let's get started. Well, I'm not going to bore you guys with the takedown process. You guys, if you've seen if you've been watching my channel, you've seen me take apart a whole bunch of shoes. So, if you want to see that process, feel free to go check out all my other videos. But I think we're just going to do a time lapse of me taking the boots apart. Here's where it gets interesting. We've got the footbed. And now we have the uppers. Not much of a boot anymore. Now here in the back, I'm going to peel this apart. You'll see that heel counter is just completely cracked and destroyed. There's Pulling it out in pieces. And what this does, it just helps to give the back portion of the boot more um, shape, sturdiness, and supports your arch and your heel. I don't know about your arch, I'm sorry. Just the heel. Um, and I guess your arch too. There are some shoes that the heel counter goes all the way towards the arch of your foot but not this pair but you see it's just it's plastic so what we're going to do is we're going to make a new one out of leather we're also going to replace this back heel lining here it's really hard to tell or see what i'm talking about but once I turn this boot inside out, you'll get a better idea of what I'm talking about. Now, I know this looks really scary. And this is not harming the boots at all. It just helps me to get access, have better access to that part I'm looking for. And now, believe it or not, this is how the boots were stitched. At least, see this stitch right here? This little binding. The pieces were stitched together and that's how you get that stitch right there, or that look right there, that binding and piping look. So they gotta stitch them inside out 
and then turn it right side in. Yeah. And then, yeah, that's how you get that stitch. So not hurting the boots, just have better access to this back portion heel here. So you see, here's the boot. This is where your heel wears up and down and it's kind of worn out, it's getting thin. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut along the edge here. Let's see, yeah, I think a pair of scissors, well, there's different ways of doing this. Let me see if I can give you a better idea or better view of what I'm doing. Okay. So I'm basically gonna cut along that stitch to remove this back portion here. And we're gonna replace it with a new piece of leather. Cause you can see, I don't know even, I don't even know if this is leather cause leather doesn't look like that once it's worn down. So I'm just gonna go ahead and replace it with the leather piece and be careful not to cut anything else. Now I'm gonna cut along this side here. There we go, and now I'll have, I'll be able to kind of tug on this top piece and just cut the stitches. All right, now that we got to the other side, I'll just go ahead and come along the edge there. And now we have our boots and we have our template for the new leather heel, heel lining. Yeah, this is a B heel lining. So we're gonna mark that out um, on a new piece of leather and then stitch it back to it. All right, so we got our new piece of leather. We, we are going to glue along the top of where we just unstitched it. Now you wanna make sure whatever you, whatever stitch you cut, you clean all the threads. Now, we obviously did that. And we're just going to line up the back here. The color isn't a hundred percent match, but it'll be good. It'll do, it'll be exactly, it'll be good enough for what we need. Hammer that all into place. Now we turn the boot back right side out, right side, right side out, yeah. And we will be able to stitch the piece in along the top. Good as new, well, almost there, it's getting there. But you see that new piece is in there. And so, see this is where this, these two top pieces, stitch lines, that's where we unstitched it. So we're gonna go ahead and go stitch it. Patching machine here. I just got a long arm, so I'm able to go all the way through and still do heel linings if the bottoms weren't taken apart. You can see I can still get to that that place. But since we got it taken apart, it's fairly simple. So I'm just gonna start at this top piece and stitch along 
whole place. Securing the top of the new heel lining. See if I can show you. So you have this stitch and then two top. I did the middle one. Which it's hard to see with the camera. But you can see it's stitched along the top. And then when we go do I'm gonna go do this top row or this top stitch. And then I'm gonna wait until we have our new heel counter in there. And then I'm gonna do this last stitch, hopefully holding the heel counter in place. Um, and then, yeah, that way it's stitched and glued into place. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this last stitch and then we'll be ready to move on. All right, so we got that piece stitched in there, ready for the heel counter. Um, next is going to be taking care of this toe counter, which basically does the same thing, but for the toe. Or same thing as the heel, but for the toe. And you can see, <clears throat> it's, it's cracked, it's not, well it's not cracked, it's just, um, it's bent, and it's not the greatest, um, doesn't give the greatest support. This is the one I took apart for the other one. It looks a lot better. <clears throat> now, what did I do? I just took a shoe last with a very similar style toe shape. All right. You stretch it over <clears throat> after you drop it, which is key. And then you nail it to the front here. And then you heat it up with the air gun because this material, it reactivates once you heat it up. So by heating it up and letting it cool, it gives it that structure back. There you see. But this is for the right, this is the right one. So that worked. It won't work for the left one. And the left one is currently being used for another toe counter I'm working on. So I think this is about ready to come off ready to dry so let me get this off and then i'll show you how i turned that into that so we got our right one and now all i'm going to do is kind of stretch it over and i'm only going to tack it in two places because i don't want to put too many more holes in the heel counter so i'm just gonna go one right here one on the other side now we're gonna stick in my heat lamp so this is what i use to reactivate um glue we when i go to stick them together like soles it's, it's kind of dirty. And then also to heat up the soles to take them off. So we're just gonna use that to heat up our toe counters here for a few minutes, let it dry, and it should go back to its original shape. Okay, so now that we've given it time to cool off, you just gotta remove those little tacks. And there you go, it's a little bit better. And so what I'll do is I'll go ahead and put this back in, all right? And then kind of do the same thing with this front piece here. Almost like we're remasting it, but not really. Does that make sense? So, We'll tack that into place. 
All right. And then that'll help kind of get those creases out and reshape the toe. So we're gonna do that. And then as for the other one, the other pair or the other side to this one, this is the left. For the right, what I did, this is my calf stretcher. So what I did was I put it in there and I expanded it, not to stretch the calf, but to kind of get all the, the wrinkles out and kind of, you see how it's, it's sagging right there. So this isn't gonna be a permanent fix, but it'll help straighten it, it out. Um, and as long as we put some boot trees in there, it'll help keep that shape and keep these uppers kind of standing up instead of sagging over. So we're gonna let this sit overnight. We're going to put this onto here and let that sit overnight and we'll be ready to go or to start again tomorrow morning. Now that the uppers are a little bit better, they're not all drooping over. Um, we're gonna be working on the heel counter. We've got the heel lining in but we need a piece that goes in between the lining, which is this piece we put in, and the uppers to give this back support. Originally, they just had a piece of, well, looks like plastic. Um, so obviously we can't reuse that. Um, so what we're going to do, we're gonna set this aside for now. We're going to take a piece of veg tan leather and a last, with a very similar size heel. And we're going to two, shape the new heel lining. This is just water. And the water will allow the leather to stretch. And once it dries, it'll allow it to keep that stretch, which is the, what we want. So, I'm going to go ahead and hammer. Now, I've done a few of these in the past. A few heel linings, heel counters. You basically just want that general shape. You see how that last has that curve to it? Because you can't just put this in the back and glue it in and call it a day. You need that that shape and that support from that leather piece. So you see how it's already starting to mold here at the back. Just gonna fold this down a little bit. I can't put any nails at the bottom because that metal plate is there. That is when you have, when you're making a new pair of shoes, when you're hammering down the back portion to the footbed, securing it to the footbed, that metal piece acts like this metal last where the nail goes in, hits that and crimps instead of going into the actual last itself. So I want to put one Right here. And one on the other side. All right, now I gotta put a couple at the top here. All righty, so we got our heel counter ready to go. We took it off the last. We cut it out, thinned out the edges so that when the lining and the outer get glued together, there's no like ridge. There's no defining line that will show you that's where this, the counter starts and stops. So what we're going to do is just move. I can do it to where I can show you guys. We're moving that, that lining up. Placing this into place. Made it a little bit, oh no, I didn't make it. So I used the old 
heel counter, or she's not heel counter, because the heel counter was legit crumbling apart. So I used a whole old heel lining template to make to cut it out, and I made it a little bit smaller because obviously it won't fit if we cut it the exact same size. Alrighty, so I'm just going in for a test fit right now. I don't know if you can see. There's the light. There it is. So, so we will glue that into place. I'll take it out now that I know it works. And I'm gonna have to move you because I'm using. Okay, this might be a little better. I was using my glue pot as a tripod. So get some glue in here. No. The old ones were plastic. We're obviously putting leather. And this will ensure many, many years of use and many resoles without cracking, without worrying about cracking. Because if it starts to crack, then you'll feel that on the inside when you're wearing them. All right, and you don't want that. And you see how far we have to take it apart just to get to that one piece. So we're taking care of that now. And now that he's gonna be wearing these, we'll get many, 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 many wears or years of wear out of it. So now that I got it pressed firmly into place, I'm gonna put down another layer of glue on top of that to glue the heel lining down into place. And we will lay this back down. I like to do this when it's wet so that I can alter and move around and position all the pieces correctly and then just let it sit and dry can you see what i'm doing no you cannot i'm sorry i need to get a film crew in here just kidding don't need no film crew all righty now that that's into place back down we're going to go back to the sewing machine and you see we stitched those top two pieces now we're going to run this bottom stitch and then we're going to run a stitch along the bottom here right here so this is where the heel ran starts and that's where it gets folded over so we're running a stitch right along here to secure all the pieces and you won't see that stitch because it's going to get tucked up underneath the boot and it's just going to help secure everything into place even more than what it is already i typically don't need it but i like to overkill my jobs i don't like it coming back to me if i can help it so at the end i've already finished this one you see there's that bottom stitch and then there's that stitch right there and on the inside it looks really nice i know you're seeing a shadow let's see if i can show it to you better there you are um and then it's got a nice sturdy heel counter it's not going to crack or crumble or do anything like that so now after we get this one taken care of we're going to work on the footbeds and then start on the soles so at this stage we got the old footbeds traced it onto a new piece of leather and you can see let me see if i can show you so that inside line is where the original footbed um tracing was that outside line is what we're going to make it we're making it a little bit wider for the customer's foot. Um, this little divot right here is from, let's see, 
this section right here. It kind of divots in, but we're gonna make it nice and straight for him. So at this page stage, we're going to glue it to another piece of leather. We're going to cut it out, trim it out. That way we will have the exact same size footbeds for each shoe. We don't need a lot of a lot of glue. Just enough to stick them together temporarily. <clears throat> and those holes that you see, those are from where I nailed the footbeds onto. Because you can see it's it's molded, it's shaped to the old person, his father's foot, his cust the, the customer's father's foot. So when you put it onto a piece of leather, you don't want to leave it like that. You want to flatten it out so you get the true size, true measurement. And from there, that's where you trace it out. So I just put a couple tacks in each of the high spots and that allowed me to get the true shape of what we want and then make it a little bit wider because it would suck for him to mail his shoes in to get fixed and then me send them back and they don't fit. All right, so I'm coming along here. We are coming along here. We got our footbeds temporarily stitched into place. It is now looking like a shoe once again. So that white piece is a gimming that gets glued to the footbed. We stitch it to the footbed so it doesn't come loose over wear. Um, and now we're going to nail the back portion of the heel because this is a 270 degree Goodyear welted boot. So the back kind of just gets tucked underneath. And nailed down. And so this can get kind of tricky. You just want to make sure you do it. You don't fold it over too much. But you fold it over just enough to that. That sweet spot that you want. And we're using small little tacks here. I don't know. Those small. They're so pokey, they get stuck to your finger. But yeah, no. Small little tacks. With a small little head on it. And I put some glue down to kind of help me stick it right that makes any sense so the glue will help hold it while I go ahead and put the nail in like I said if that makes any sense to you guys but this is just a tedious process after this we got one more step before we could start putting soles on and that's stitching the welt it's not as tricky. It's just super time consuming. And you can see slowly we're folding it over. How I like to do this is, I'll show you guys right now. So I'll put, let's see, I'll put one right here one right here, and one dead center. Then I'll go into the middle of that, of this one and this one, right, where'd I put it? Right there, and then we'll go in the middle of this one and this one right there, and we'll just continue, I'll continue putting it in this middle of each one until I'm completely filled up the back. And that helps me to evenly nail back this the back portion, I guess, if you can call it. Nice and evenly in the square, well, circle, round. But you know what I meant. So, these little tacks are going in through the upper leather, the heel lining that we put in, the heel counter we put in, 
the new footbed. Then it's hitting that metal last and crimping. And so it goes like this, it hits that metal last, turns and crimps like that. So it nice, it cinches it down. All one, two, three, four pieces together. All right, I'll put just a, a couple more in here just for safety measures. I don't want this thing coming undone. I right, got one more here. I'm just gonna put it over here. little cinch and there you go that is not going anywhere we got to see one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty small tacks in the back plus that stitch holding it all together now it's really hard for you guys to see but it hits this metal last and let's see if i can show you here is a small brass tack. I'm just gonna lightly hit it. And do you see how it turned like a J? That's what it does when it hits this and it cinches all those layers together. So now we have a nice sturdy backing, heel backing, heel, heel portion. I don't know what you wanna call this. The back portion of the heel. Um, now we are ready for the welts. Okay. Okay. Move you to where you can see me a little bit better. So, here we go. We have our leather welts. They did a light brown. And we are stitching the new welts on. Now we had the footbeds temporarily stitched into place that way the footbed doesn't get twisted around and so as i'm just going around like here at the front you see it's stitched then there there so as i go around i'm just taking those stitches out but you can see the holes so it's just simply following those old those holes and stitching them on so the new gaming and the new welt. Um, if you guys have seen my other videos, I've done this plenty, plenty times. Um, but for anybody that may be new watching, let me show you what we have to do. So we have the next hole right there. All right, so we line up the new welt. The welt has a groove to counter sink the stitching. So you line up that groove with the welt and you poke through. Now you see it kind of tapers off, right? So you want the needle to come through that tapered part so that the welt can curve out a little bit. So you go through the welt, through that hole, through the new gimming. I'll show you that way. The welt, the uppers, the gimme. Then you have the inside string. We're gonna take our needle and pull it through. The needle has the little hook at the very end. So now you have a loop. You pull this outside string through the loop and then you pull the inside string back inside. And then pull tight. So it makes a knot like this. This is what it ends up looking like. It's obviously flared up, but once we get the cork in there, these, this, it, these, this is a heel rand, leather heel rand. So since the welt stops right here, we have to put a piece of leather to continue that look all the way around the back. I still have to trim it, but I dyed it brown just like we did the welt to match. Um, we had the shank that went underneath that and this is a piece of leather. This is the shank cover. Now, once we get the cork in, we can put the soles on and 
press the welts to the soles and then it'll flatten out and look like a shoe. Now, cool thing about that leather shank cover is it was the inside portion of the old sole. So we were able to salvage that, sand it up, clean it up, and use that as a shank cover. So he kind of has still some original parts to his father's original boots. So here we are at here. Here we are. We have our heel rand, which is made out of leather. Our welts stitched on, also leather. Our shank, shank cover, which is leather. Underneath it, it's a metal shank. And then the front section here, we have cork. Now we are ready for the soles, which we are doing JR soles. Now these are not the ones by Kilger. I still have a few of these left. So I haven't had to order any of those Kilgur soles yet, but we're gonna try to get this centered as possible. This is a pretty wide shoe as it is, and I just made it wider. Remember, because the customer asked. So, and some of the sole uh, yeah, some of the yeah, some of the welt is gonna hang over the sole, but that is okay because we're going to trim it down. I think we got it centered fairly well. I just gotta hammer it on. Alrighty, remember how the. The welts were flared up. Now I'm going to run it through my press and we're going to press those together. Now we got it all pressed together from the sides. You can see the welts um, kind of leaning over the edges, but it's okay because we're going to trim this down to size. We got a lot to trim. So once we trim it, we will go ahead and stitch it, nail the back, and this will end up looking like this you see it's a lot more narrower and kind of follows the shape of the boot tapered not tapered but we narrowed that that back heel rand close to the boot just like it originally was and then we went ahead and stitched it did a little bit of a a bottom stain just a simple one nothing too fancy and then we nailed the back with a whole bunch more nails. Let's count this one. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen more nails in the back. And then when we make our new heel bases, this is gonna get glued on to there. Like so. And then we're gonna put even more nails going from this side, securing this piece to the back here and we will have a solid boot ready to be worn again so it is currently really late i don't know what time it is but this is as far as i wanted to get for tonight I'm trying to get these wrapped up by christmas it is monday the uh, 18th so hopefully i'll get this wrapped up and shipped out by tomorrow so Let's get this taken care of. Okay, so before we get to the boots, the final product, I wanna show you guys something that my wife and I have started making, well, mainly my wife. Um, these are custom sandals. Now, I don't wanna say the name of the sandal that we made it off of because technically they didn't make them. My wife hand drew all the designs. She hand painted everything we use their um their footbeds and their buckles we get them from a, a supplier our, our actual shoe repair supplier but we could do pretty much any design that you want so these are a couple that we made um a sunflower kind of fall themed here's a little fall snoopy thing that she did um, and then here's a more intricate design 
with swirls and tooled leather and instead of having just those straight straps um she was able to make them wavy and look like leaves and stuff so super cool stuff uh but yeah we take actual genuine foot beds we take veg tan leather we use a laser engraver to cut out the straps cut out the the markings which like i said my wife hand draws on her tablet all the designs um and here is another one so a customer reached out he wanted to mix a snoopy with the sunflower and have the farm that he works for put on it so here's one that she did and it's kind of hard to read in the light um, but there's the outside and then on the inside there's that little snoopy and then here are the other ones so these are pretty cool now if you notice these have different style soles these were we put a a crepe style sole just like the Birkenstock sole, right? And we sanded the tread down and we put a Vibram 148 sole on there because these are gonna be used on the farm so they need a little bit more grip and durability. So that is something cool that we, we've started doing. If you guys have any questions or you wanna get yourself a pair, go ahead and contact us. Um, I'll put all the information down below. <sighs> All right, we are done with these boots. They didn't turn out too bad. We pretty much replaced everything on the bottom. New footbeds, new um, heel counters, which is, this was the heel counter. Remember it gives support and stiffness up here in the back. Remember we reshaped that toe counter if I had the material to replace it, I would have just replaced it. Um, however, I don't have that material here in the shop yet. Um, but this, it gave it a lot more shape and actually a lot more rigidity than it used to. So I'm very happy that that turned out that way. Um, new footbeds, so the customer can put his footprint in instead of having his dad's footprint. Um, and we made it a little bit wider so that he can fit a little bit better um, he personally requested that we do that. So we did that. New heel lining. Uh, we did new leather stacked heel bases. We did some JR soles and Vibram heels. This is a cowboy heel. So it's got some holes with washers. And then you put the nails in and they kind of suction cups it to the boots. Um, yeah, JR leather soles. Probably the best quality leather sole you can get on the market. It's gonna last the longest. Um, but yeah, not too bad. We also put some, you see that green? That's just a thin padding on top of the leather footbed. Um, and then that brown is the new sock liner. Sock count, sock liner I think is what it's called. I don't know. It's just the back portion that covers the nails that hold the heel base on it. So I've got one more step to do. We're gonna do some metal nylon or metal plates on the back of these so that he doesn't wear his heels out as fast. Um, but I'll go ahead and put those on after or before we actually get them sent out. But yeah, let me know what you guys think of the boots. It was a fun project. If y'all have any questions, feel free to email me or contact me on Instagram. I'm going to link everything in the description below. Um, I think that about wraps everything up. Thank you guys. Y'all have a wonderful day. Um, God bless. And we'll see you on the next one.